Hey everyone, Amy Bowser Tennant here, the Genealogy Reporter, and it is Genealogy Tip Tuesday. Now, I know we have talked a lot about FamilySearch.org. We use it for the Family Search family tree. We use it for finding records, most especially. Love that part, right? Um, we've even used it to search the catalog and find out what microfilm might be digitized and available to us that hasn't yet been indexed. But there are other features and tools on Family Search that are wonderful, and I want to bring those to your attention today. So if we're here at FamilySearch.org and we have logged in, let's first click on Search, and this time choose Books. The Family History Library there in Salt Lake City is the largest genealogical library in the world. Okay, just literally thousands and thousands of books. And Family Search has taken the time to start digitizing these many books, these family histories and local histories and other um, types of resources from the library. So I don't know about you, but books are really helpful. I find a lot of good information or at least clues from books about my family. So let's click in here in the search field, a surname. I'm going to go with my maiden surname here and see what books might pop up. As you can see, I have over 11,000 results. And if I zip down through here, I can take a look at the titles, um, maybe get a little um, thumbnail print of the front cover of the book and so forth. I'm going to click here on the Bowser family history. Now this book, if you look here to the left, has 310 pages. I can view all of them right here from my home computer. So if I click this, then you can see there it is we've got our digital image of the book by clicking on the right arrow key or left arrow key you can flip through the pages of this book which is wonderful okay it's, sometimes it's very helpful to go through literally page by page of a book that has to do with your family now if we didn't want to do that though we have some options down here at the bottom left corner is a menu bar click here on this thumbnail which is looks like a little grid and it will give you a view of several pages all at once you can roll down through here and say you were interested in pictures i love pictures and you find all these great pictures here um, let's click on this one i'm going to zoom in by clicking here click and drag. This is Martin Luther Bowser. Now, if Martin were my ancestor, I might want to save this picture. I could do that by clicking over here on the menu, print or download this file. I could also take a screenshot. Now, let's say I'm here within the book and I want to do a search for a specific ancestor or where my ancestors lived. So my Bowser family ancestors were living in Montgomery County, Ohio. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go back and I'm going to just do Ohio. And it go it's going to give me 60 results in which the word Ohio was used in this book. Now I can glide down through here and see if any of these catch my eye. Well, this one does. I recognize numerous uh, person's names. George and Henry. Uh, Dayton is in Montgomery County. This looks really good. It's on page 256. So if I click here, it's going to take me directly to that page. And I can take a look here and read about this Daniel that they find in the census in 1800 for Hopewell and Woodbury Township in Pennsylvania and then how he moved into the state of Ohio and here are his children and it talks about um, um, a couple of the girls and who they married uh, mentions other children so on and so forth but you can see how this is just filled with some great information. Now, as a warning, I will tell you, I have actually read this in the past, and though there are wonderful clues and some of the information is correct, not all of it was. So just because you're reading in a book doesn't mean it's true, but great uh, pieces of information and at the very least, great clues. Now that is the books. What about these genealogies? These are pretty neat. Let me show you these. So you can pull up 
a genealogy that someone else has done. Uh, let's put in, a, excuse me, Henry Bowser. Um, he's the guy that was in Montgomery County, Ohio. I'll put in a, a spouse. So we didn't have to give it very much very much information, but you'll notice here we've got a couple of different um, pedigree resource files where Henry is mentioned. Um, we also have some historical records for Henry Bowser. And so th these are my, my guy, I already know that, but let's say I didn't. I could pull up one of these records, say this one right here, this Ohio County marriage record, and it takes me directly to a digital copy of Henry and Catherine's marriage record. So that was that's pretty pretty cool. Now the last thing I want to show you is in this memories section. And if you click here on memories and choose gallery, you have the option to look at your own memories that you've uploaded. So these are all the things that I've put on family search. And you know, I already have those, right? I put them on there. I'm interested in what does what do other people have that I might want? So if I click here on find and type in, let's say, a surname, Bowser. And I'm I'm just interested in photos for right now. Let's take a look at that. So I'll, I'll move that over to photos, click find. And now I have all these different pictures of Bowser's. Now this one is interesting to me, Catherine Bowser. I do not have that picture. I wonder if she's my Catherine Bowser. By clicking on this image, I can see that, let's see here, that this Catherine Bowser was born in 1809. She died in 1906. Wow, she was really old. I can see who it was contributed by. So I might contact this person and say, hey, where'd you get that picture? Um, you know, that kind of thing. But I'm going to click here on Catherine and this is going to take me to the family tree so that I can see who is she married to? Where was she born? Where did she die? Uh, who were her parents? These types, types of things because I want to know um, if this is my, my gal. Okay, she was married to Noah. I recognize the name Valentine. I don't know how he fits in my family, but you can kind of see here how we can use, let me hit the back button one more time, all these photographs in the memory section to find new members of our family. Like I said, uh, let's take a look at, let me just jot down through here to see what else we might find that might be kind of cool. Um, William F. Bowser. I want to click here. I have a William in my family. I don't know if it's the same guy, but this is William Francis Bowser. We notice that it has been contributed by Jeannie Weed. Now, the, the thing about this contributed by, you want to know that because this person may be one of your living relatives with other pictures you might be interested in. So we could click um, all sorts of different things. We could open this in a new tab. We could download it. We can add it to an album if we already recognized it was our, uh, our guy. Here he is, William Francis Bowser. Looks like he was born in 1902 and died in 1972. So just awesome ways to use family search besides the traditional ways of using it for record searches or on the catalog. So take a look at some of these fun tools this weekend, your long weekend over Thanksgiving. I hope it is something that you enjoy and find entertaining as well as helpful. Have a great Thanksgiving, everybody. Bye-bye.